Okay, welcome back. So let's just get straight down to business now, shall we? What we're going to do in this lesson is convert more units. So you should have the process down pretty well. It's just that the units we're going to work with in here are compound units. Not things like feet, but things like square feet, or miles per hour, or cubic feet per minute. Things that involve more than one unit at the same time. Let's just jump right in and get started. Whoa, that was a little far. There we go. Okay, so conversion factors for area and volume are created based on the conversion factors for length. It's not hard to do, and just like before, if you don't have the conversion factor that you need, you can always create it. We're going to do this one here because it's pretty fast and easy. We can look at a nice picture. Remember, a square yard is a square that measures one yard on each side. And if we wanted to convert a square yard to a square feet as a new conversion factor, it's pretty easy to see that there are nine square feet in a square yard. And so we could define a square yard in terms of square feet. The question is, how would we create a conversion factor if we wanted to talk about um, square inches and square feet? And it work pretty much like this. Just like we did before, we realize that we're creating a conversion factor. This one yard is hypothetical. It's an exact unit in our conversion factor. And we write it as a fraction. One square yard divided by one. Except that we want to split these units up. And we realize that a square yard whoops, is made by multiplying a yard by a yard. So really we're going to start off with a fraction that has multiple units in it. And I know, you know, that one yard is equal to three feet. And we would put the three feet in the numerator and one yard in the denominator so that we can watch some units cancel. But this isn't enough. If we stopped right here, we'd have three um, yard feet, yards times feet. And that's not what we want. We want square feet. So essentially what we need is another unit ratio, the same as the one we just used. Three feet is equivalent to one yard. And that causes a second, whoops, wrong spot. Having some trouble today, aren't I? There we go. The second factor of yards to cancel. And so now you can see that's where the nine comes from. Three times three is nine. And the square feet are the units that remained in the calculation. Just like before, we need to worry about significant digits. But this time we were creating a conversion factor and all of the values that we used were exact. So let's see, only exact values. Were used and that means no rounding is needed. All right, so it's about that easy. We just have to be careful and make sure that we keep track of all the units involved. We're not just going to have single units like we did last time. Let's flip the page and see what else is here. All right, we're going to create a new conversion factor. One cubic foot is approximately how many cubic meters? I'll get you started. One cubic foot. That would be one foot times foot times foot over one because we're dealing with that fraction to begin with. Your job is to start multiplying by unit ratios so that all of those factors of feet cancel and we have nothing left but meters when we're done. Pause the recording and then come back when you're ready.
And hopefully you did something like that using three of those unit ratios so that feet cancel all three times. When we go to do the calculation here, we have 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1, and in the denominator, 3.28 times itself three times, so I'm just going to say cubed. That's the numerator value. So we take 1 and divide by it. And so we have 0 0.028 Three three eight six stuff 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 stuff, and you've learned by now that we don't need all of these digits. We can't keep all of these digits because we've got some error here associated with this inexact conversion factor. So we have to round. How many significant digits should we keep? Well, let's look and see what we had. Infinitely many significant digits there three significant digits there, infinitely many significant digits there. So we're going to keep three significant figures. And remember, those three significant figures, we don't count these first two zeros, those are the ones we want, that's where we're going to round. So in the end, one cubic foot is about 0 0.028 and then round to the next spot, which stays as a 3. And those will be cubic meters. And there, now we have a new conversion factor. Yep, it's that easy. So we have a few more examples to go, and then we will call it a day. Let's come down to the bottom of your page. We have a rectangular air duct measuring 15.2 centimeters by 25.7 centimeters. And we would like to find the opening in square meters. What's the area of the opening in square meters? And the first thing we need to know is how many centimeters are in a meter. And hopefully you already know this. You should know that there are 100 centimeters in a meter. But otherwise, let's just start. In order to find area, we have to multiply the length by the width. So we have 15.2 centimeters multiplied by 25.7 centimeters. Whoops. Don't multiply that yet. Save all the rounding for the end. But that's our initial area, and so we'll put it over 1. And then, of course, we need to multiply by a unit ratio so that these centimeters cancel out and meters remain. So 1 meter is in the numerator, 100 centimeters is in the denominator, and that gets rid of one of those centimeters in the numerator, but not the other. So we have to do it one more time so that the second factor of centimeters also divides out. And let's see what we have. 15.2. Try that again. 15.2 multiplied by 25.7 is, and then we'll divide by 100, and divide by 100 again. I know, you could have divided by 100 in your head twice, but that's all right. So we have 0 0.039064, and those are square meters. And I know you want to keep all of those digits, but they are not all meaningful. We know that we have infinitely many significant digits here and infinitely many significant digits here, but this one only has three and this one only has three. So we can only keep three significant digits.
So when we round, there. Remember those first two zeros are just placeholders. They are not significant digits. So the area of the opening is approximately 0, 0.039 and then round the regular way 1. And that would be square meters. Let's flip the page. So far we've been working with compound units that involve multiplication. Let's try one that involves some division. We have a speedometer that reads 53 miles per hour. And even if your speedometer is digital, you know that this is a measured value. You are not traveling exactly 53 miles per hour. Your speed is something that rounds to 53 miles per hour. So right away, we know that 53 has two significant digits. We want to change to kilometers per minute. So we have a conversion factor here. We normally look this up. Uh, one kilometer is worth about 0.621 miles. The one kilometer, infinitely many significant digits, 0.621 miles, three significant digits. And then you also know that one hour is worth 60 minutes. And that's an exact conversion factor. So these are both labeled with infinitely many significant digits. OK. So here's how it works. 53 miles per hour as a fraction is 53 miles per, that's our division, one hour. So now let's start with the distance. We know that one kilometer is worth about 0 0.621 miles. And we see that the units of miles have canceled. And so then we do this again. We want the hours to go away. Hours are in the denominator, so we'll put the one hour here in the numerator. And one hour is worth 60 minutes. So the hour in the denominator here cancels with the hour in the numerator there. And that's the only difference there is. We just have to pay attention to where the units are located and make sure that we put the unit ratio, sorry, uh, that we choose the right one so that things cancel out nicely. Let's see what we have here. 53 divided by 0 0.621 is, and then we'll take that answer and also divide by 60, and we end up with this crazy value. 0.1, not 0.1. Clearly, I need a little more coffee today. 1.42436. Stuff, stuff, stuff. What sort of units do we have on this stuff, stuff, stuff? Well, that would be kilometers in the numerator, per for the division, minutes in the denominator, just like we wanted to have. Kilometers per minute. All right, how many significant digits? Well, we want the same number of significant digits as the measurement that had the fewest number of significant digits. So we're going to keep two of them. That would be right here. So when we round, we will keep two significant digits. And that means we have one point, and then we'll round the next one, but that stays as a four, because of course there's a two to the right of that. About 1.4 kilometers per minute. All right, that's how it works. This last example is all here waiting for you. Atmospheric pressure is approximately 14.7 pounds per square inch at sea level. We'd like to know what atmospheric pressure is if we used kilograms per square meter. And I'm not even going to start any of this for you. Pause the recording, work it all out on your own, and then come back when you are ready.
and hopefully you started off with 14.7 pounds in the numerator and inches squared, inches times inches in the denominator. And then we need to multiply. And it doesn't matter which unit ratio you use first, it just matters that we have them all accounted for. So I'm going to start off by converting the weight. One kilogram divided by 2.205 pounds and the units of pounds cancel. And then we'll convert some inches. 38.4 inches is worth one meter. And you notice that the inches in the denominator that we started with cancel with inches here in the numerator. And then we do it again. And this means that the last factor of inches in the denominator has now canceled with inches in the numerator. The units that remain are kilograms in the numerator, per for the division, and meters squared in the denominator, just like we wanted. So now, let's do some calculations. 14.7 pounds. I guess the pounds canceled, so they're not really there anymore. Divided by 2.205 is, and then we take that result and multiply by 38.4 and multiply by 38.4, nope, I missed it up again, 38.4, oh my, delete, delete, there, that's better, I'm having difficulty with my calculator, or using my calculator and speaking at the same time today. All right, here we go. That was equal to 9,830.4. And these are kilograms per meter squared. The only problem, of course, is that this is not equal to that amount because we started off with something that was measured approximately 14.7 pounds per square inch. We can't end up with an exact answer if we started off with an approximate measurement. It's just not going to work. So how many significant digits do we need? Well, in 14.7, that's three significant digits. And our conversion factor, the first part has infinitely many, one, two, and the second part has four. And over in this conversion factor, the first part has infinitely many, and the second part has three. So we are going to use three significant digits. I'm going to take my highlighter here. Three significant digits is there. So it looks like we're actually using four, but we're not. This zero is just now a placeholder. 14.7 pounds per square inch is about 9,830 kilograms per meter squared. And if you want, you can underline this three just to tell people to stop and not count the zero as a significant digit. But you remember that that's not really necessary because unless we're told otherwise, we just assume that the zero is a placeholder anyway and we don't count it in significant digit calculations. And that's it. So hopefully that went pretty smoothly for you and we'll see you in the next lesson. Take care. Bye-bye.